Throughout northern Maine, timber harvesting remains big business, as it has since the early 1800s, when large-scale logging operations began in the vast spruce and pine forests of the state. And if you're interested in learning more about the fascinating history of logging in Maine, be sure to pay a visit to the Patton Lumberman's Museum in the little town of Patton. This is the sleeping area that the men would have slept in, and like I said, probably up to 15 men would sleep in that area. They called this the deacon's bench. This is where the men sat to put on their boots in the morning, eat their meals. Um, it was an open fire pit, so they cooked right here, and they left the opening in the roof so the smoke would go out. Um, when they came in at night, this would be called a stink pole because they would take off their wet wool clothes and try to dry it, and I guess the odor was very oh, it was prolific. Pretty yeah, pretty <laughs> nasty. Like I said, and there's the um, sharpening stone for their axes and the fro that they used to split the shingles with. We have a wooden sink that they would fill with water to do up what dishes they had or wash up. Yeah, yeah. Wow, pretty pretty rustic though. Living absolutely, quarters. And I, very very and, much and, so. And I guess not really meant for the tall lumberjacks. No. <laughs> And this, like I said, was probably 30 or 40 years later when there were more men in the woods and they needed better accommodations. So this center part they call a dingle, and we're not really sure why it's called a dingle, because we've never found that word anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it sounds interesting it to sounds say. It sounds interesting. I'm sure somebody will uh, come, come up with, with an something. Right? So this would have been the kitchen and the cook's quarters. The cooks um, slept in the, in the kitchen. They would set up the tables for the um, lumbermen to come in in the morning and in the evening. There was no talking at the tables. They had the signs up because they didn't want to hear complaints. Or, and they wanted the men in and out as quickly as they could so that they could go down to the next meal. And this, is pretty, this, is, this, is, this, this is authentic. Is really this is authentic. Like, huh? Yes, it is. Um, and instead of sleeping all under on the boughs, they slept two to a bunk. So they didn't have a bunk to themselves, but it was two. And they had the cook stove here, and again, another stink pole. And this I always thought was interesting. This was their towel to wash up with, but it was just a circular towel. So you wipe your hands and pull it down for the next person. Yeah, I, I don't think that's really hygienic. Probably not, <laughs> probably not. Tom, this is our Lombard log hauler. The Lombard? Lombard. 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 Well, this thing looks like something out of Dr. Zeus to me. Well, it could have been. That could have been <laughs> the idea for it. But back in the early 1900s, when we were using horses in the woods exclusively, it took like many, many horses to get through a season. And the steam engines had come around by that time. So a gentleman went to Alvin Lombard, who had a, um, a workshop in the Waterville area and asked if there was some way they could make a track to go through the woods. So Alvin Lombard patented the first cleat track, which is that circular forward weighted track that you now see on army tanks. Really? And any Caterpillar bulldozers, they all come from the patent of that track. Oh, no kidding. In Waterville, Maine, yes. So like I said, there were only 83 of them ever manufactured of the original steam ones. There's very few left. When they broke down in the woods, they generally left them took parts off of them to keep the other ones running. Um, but it, it changed the whole way the woods was um, logged oh, in sure. the early 1900s. It took us from using you know horses in the woods to machinery. But they left the sides open because this machine, this machine had no brakes. So going down steep, if it got away from them, they wanted the steerer to be able to jump off if he had to. <laughs> Hey, yeah. safety first. Safety first, yeah. <laughs> Imagine OSHA. Oh, this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you for watching. For more exclusive video content, including short films, episodes, and features, be sure to click the subscribe button and look for us on social media at Explorer New England Films.